May God richly bless you from El Paso, Texas, Pastor Hope Martinez. I uh, just pray that God gave you a very blessed week. We had all kinds of things happen this week, but most of all, we had the Lord in our, our side. The Bible said, the Lord, before us, it could be against us. That's the reason why we are committed now to continue our faith in this trying time and understand that if God be in control of all things, then we can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. I want to take this up for you, first of all, to greet all of you that are from out of El Paso and all, especially all the members of Templo Hermosa. Really appreciate what you've done in our behalf for the pastor. You've been calling to check on us, been taking supplies to the house, making sure everything is fine. And we're really grateful to that. My wife and I are thankful for all you've done on our behalf and knowing that uh, because God's in control and God has touched your life and your heart, you're out there ministering to our needs also. It is our pleasure, our desire, our great desire is to fulfill the calling God has placed upon our hearts. To do our best during this trying time to be the pastor God called us to be. So therefore, we just thank everybody. We thank what you've done on our behalf. The ones that brought food. Some people brought food already cooked. I mean, I mean we, we can't be more blessed than that. So we thank God because He's in control of all things. And in spite of what the world says, in spite of what is all around us, in spite of what even in our own city, the most undisciplined city as far as being able to comply with the ordinance, we stand also in the presence of God. We say, thank you, Lord, because in the midst of all this, you're still the shining light. You're still the hope. You're the expectation. You're everything we need for our lives. And because the world is looking for an answer, we have the answer. The answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. So I come to you before I even deliver this message unto your life. I want to share the greatest love of all, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you go through a trying time, I ask you today to release your faith and allow God to be in control of all things. There's nothing impossible for God. The God that I teach, the God that I preach, the God that I live for is ready to meet your every need. Oh yes, we're separated by a distance, maybe many miles apart, but we're in the presence of Almighty God. Today we come together into the presence of God and say, God, because you live, we can face tomorrow. The bonding that is brought to the body of Christ and to the believers is the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. His ability to be able to meet the needs of all those people that are hurting in this trying time. There's not a sickness that God cannot heal. There's not a situation God cannot mend. There's nothing that God can't do in our behalf. I pray that today that the Lord will come and bless your household. That everything you've been looking down upon and saying, I can't do this. You can also say when it's all said and done, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. It's our attitude, our determination to make things better for our lives that allows God to work in a dy dynamic way in our lives. So don't say, I'm not worthy. Don't say, God doesn't care. Don't say, what else is next? Say, God, I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to believe that you're going to meet my every need because indeed the Lord is still in control of all things. Let me tell you how in control God is. I was sleeping very good last night, and now we go to sleep, you know, my Christian music playing and praying over the message and asking God to give me what he was, was going to touch the lives and hearts of people, change the minds of people. And last night as I went to sleep, I was going over this message I'm going to preach to you this morning, and then at 3 o'clock, three, about 3.30 this morning, the Lord woke me up with the needs of a, a couple within the church. And I tried to get away, try to say, okay, God, we'll, you know, we're going to take care of you. God said, no, you get up and you write. You get up and send a message, even though it's 3 o'clock in the morning, you send the message. I want them to understand, I still care. I got up at that time, went to my office and began to text and deliver the message God laid, laid upon my heart. That's why I say to you, for those that believe that people are willing to be subjected to God's will, God is going to meet your every need. So I challenge you today, as you come into the presence of God, as you join me and release your faith to understand, God's still speaking. God is still ministering. God still cares. God is looking over your life. And I don't care what's happening in your life. I don't know what. Maybe fall by the wayside. And today you need to be restored in the presence of God. Today's the day. Don't wait another day. Today's your moment to receive Jesus Christ once again into your life and allow Him to be Lord over everything you do. Just trust and obey. Just release your faith. And wherever you might be, where you're home, in a car, wherever you are, watching this message, watching this service, I pray that you will release your faith. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to call it done. Come on. Put our faith together as we pray. Heavenly Father, whom else can we go to? For only you have words of eternal life. I come into your presence, Lord, acknowledge you, your greatness, your power, and your authority. I glorify your name, Heavenly Father, for all the things you bestowed upon us. We are blessed in so many ways. Oh, the world is seen it as something terrible, something tragic, but we see it as a call to repentance before your presence. And the day we stand in your presence, we call out to you, Heavenly Father. We're calling to a God that listens and sees for the needs of his people, that in the midst of all the trials and tribulation, you're still in control of all things. It is our faith that will move your hand. And when you move your hand, Heavenly Father, there's nothing impossible for you. So I reach out to those that are in need today, going through emotional stress, to spiritual battles, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We break the bondage 
to the enemy upon their lives and deliver them, Lord, to the fullness of your gospel, to your presence, to the power of your Holy Spirit, to lead them to a higher ground that they might be blessed in such a special way because that's what you came for, that they might have an abundant life. We pray for all those who are sick. For the Bible says that by your stripes we are healed. And together as a body of Christ, we unite in our faith. We call upon the powerful name of Jesus Christ by those stripes that you took for us and you deliver us from all sickness because you rose from the dead and that promise is alive. Now we claim, we rebuke all sickness, all situations that are to have come against the body of Christ, come against those believers in Jesus Christ, even those that are reaching out to you at this time, Heavenly Father, there's nothing impossible to you. Whether they're in the hospital, whether they're at home, where they might be, we send the healing hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just fill that room, fill that bed with that presence of Almighty God. Deliver from affliction, from a pain, and let them know you're still in control of all things. And because you live, we trust, we believe in you. We have our sights put direct off upon you, believing that for you there's really nothing impossible. So, Heavenly Father, we leave these things in your hands. We're praying, expecting good things to happen, to, re to receive reports of your greatness, of your love, and how you ministered to the lives of people. Heavenly Father, now we're ready to go into the message. I pray, God, that your word will come alive in the hearts of those who are listening, that we might be able to portray the challenge to the minds and hearts of people, that when it's all said and done, they can say, hey, today we spent some time with God. So, Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, even we're in diverse places, but we're in your presence. Let your presence, let your word speak unto our hearts. Let us be challenged by your word, and let's go forward with the determination that today is a day to make things right with God, to receive our miracle from God, to receive your blessing, Heavenly Father, when we meet the condition you set for. So allow us through your word to challenge the hearts and minds of people. For I ask it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week I began a series, well, actually last week was Easter Sunday, huh? How quick time flies. So I come to understand that as I was looking uh, over, thinking about our message, we interrupted, we started actually two weeks ago, a series called, What Happens When Jesus Comes Your Way? The determination to know that he's still in control of all things. So as I was looking over this, I thought about all the people that will impact your life. There's a lot of people who will influence you. Friends, family, you know, a lot of people that come into your life that will really impact your life. Now, let's be honest. Some impacts are positive and some are negative. The things that are negative, we say, nah, I really don't need this, you know. I really don't need this situation. We're trying to find an answer, uh, an alternative to that situation. But the ones that are good, the people that bless our lives, the people that bring joy, a smile into our face, those are awesome. As children, it was dad and mom. Those special people in our lives that we all reach, reach out to, that even dur during our rebellious time of life as we're growing up, when everything came against us, we'd always go running back to dad and mom to receive counsel and direction because we knew that we knew when we were in their presence, they had words of wisdom for our lives. I'm speaking about uh, some of us who were blade, raised within a Christian household. People had the fear of God upon their heart. They wanted the best for our lives. So we went through life. We acknowledged those other people. We made friends as we went along the way. And I always challenge uh, young people especially, you know, a lot of times you replace your parents with friends. I tell people, you know what? Your friends are going to change. You only have one set of parents. Honor them, love them, respect them for what they stand for. And it's really sad to say that a lot of times we have to wait until we're at the funeral service of our dad and mom for them to understand everything she or he wanted was the best for my life. It is that moment we say, wow, everything she said or he said was really for real for the better of my life. But it's at that moment that we come to say, wow, that I might understand the leading of God's spirit through those people that will impact my life. There's friends, like I said, and they'll be there, but they'll be here today, maybe gone tomorrow. Rarely will you find a friend that will be a friend for a lifetime, but there are few that will come that way. But when you're going a friendship, you, you trust them. You're going to spend time with them. You go to the movies, you go to different places because you feel like, oh, I'm, in the, I, I'm with the people that I really appreciate, people I really like. And then there's also in your life those spiritual leaders. Individual will touch your life in such a special way. It didn't have to be a pastor. It could be a church leader. It could be a church member. Someone that really ministered to your life. That when you were the most hurting at the time of your life, they stepped in. They reached out to touch the heart and meet the every need to have. It's at those moments that we go through trying times. When the sorrow has afflicted our lives. When we can't find an answer for our lives and we're calling out, God, please send someone. God, please minister to my life. God, be in a special way in my life. I know that my job is, as pastor of the church, I have the job of going to many places to speak to many people. And especially when people are really sick, are confronting surgeries or major things of illness in their lives, 
And when I walk into the room, they say, oh my God, thank you, Pastor, for coming. Like if someone special walked into the room, they feel like, oh, now I'm secure. Now everything's going to be fine because the pastor is coming. The pastor's coming to pray over my life. And this is the influence we want to have on the lives of people. Something positive in their lives that they might be blessed and come to understand that when our faith is weak, we can lean on somebody for a moment. We can reach out to someone and they will reach down to us to minister to every need. But this is what life is all about, to be impacted by the people that surround us. My question to you this morning is, who are you allowing to pass through your life and be able to influence your decisions as you go through life? For you see, 2,000 years ago, God sent His only Son. His name was Jesus Christ. He came into this world, and His impact was positive and negative. Negative in a sense to a Jewish faith. They felt this is a rebel. He wants to change everything. We don't want Him around. To the point that Saul of Tarsus determined to finish with Christianity after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to finish with all this. That was a negative sector because they felt like, this is religion. This is our faith. He's coming against our faith. And so the impact that Jesus made to that group of people was not that positive, but to others. They listened to his speak and watched him minister. For three and a half glorious years of ministry, as they watched him preach the word and teach the word and work miracles and do healing, so many different things. That he would also chastise and speak out and set, a, uh, set a, a course of life for the believer and the Lord Jesus Christ. For then he came to fulfill what he said then in John 14, 8. When I said, I am the way, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father if, if not by me. So it makes us understand clearly he had a path for us to follow. And along that path, when he lived here upon the earth, every time Jesus would pass the way, the lives are going to be blessed. And because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he wants to pass through your life. Would you allow him this morning just to pass through your life and to minister to your every need? There's not a secret that you give him. There's not a situation happening in your life that God cannot control or take over. He just allow him to pass your way. And you would ask, Pastor, what would happen if Jesus passes my way? Well, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I still believe that the Jesus of the Bible is still the Jesus of the day. Meeting the needs of people, ministering to the needs of people. He's still opening the eyes of the blind. He's still doing great miracles and great things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. There is power. But we need to allow him that every time he passes our way, we take time to spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. We come to understand it because of who he is that we can receive the blessings that we, God wants to bestow upon our lives. Don't let him pass you by. Allow him to stop for a moment to minister to the needs in your life. So we ask, what happens when Jesus passes my way? Last uh, two weeks ago when I started this message, I said that when Jesus passes your way, he's going to honor the faith of those that are in need. And we talked about the woman with the issue of blood, how she had built up her faith, sick for 12 years, and God honored the faith. After 12 years... After 12 years of waiting, after 12 years expecting a miracle, she received the healing from the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore we come to the second topic is, what will happen if Jesus passes my way? If you allow Jesus to pass your way, he's, the miracle is on the way also. Jesus is a Jesus of miracles. Let's talk about miracles. What is a miracle? Miracles mean is breaking the, the law, the law of nature, going against those things that are established. Say, it's this way. And then God says, no, it's my way, because after all, I'm the one that made nature. I'm the one in control of all things. It's, uh, we need to define the difference in between healing and miracles. No, healing is when you become sick, and there's uh, doctors you can see, and there's medications you can take, and you can take these, and you also receive your healing. But then you go to the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he extends his hand of love and mercy, touches your physical body, and then you are healed. A miracle is when you come against situations where they say, there is no hope. There's no way this is going to happen. You were born blind. You were uh, born deaf. You were born with issues of life. Said, there is no remedy. They say, hey, you're four stage cancer. Nothing can happen in your life. And then people release their faith and come to the Lord Jesus Christ, expecting a miracle. And I've seen many miracles in the precious name of Jesus Christ. People that believe, having come to the crossroad of their life, saying, either I believe or I die. I said, I'm not going to die. I'm going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is when miracles happen. When we put aside all our excuses, we put away all the things that could uh, uh, flatten our faith or just destroy our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we begin to embrace the promise of who God really is and to believe that the creator of all things that stood at the day of creation and spoke the things into existence is the one that wants to minister to your need today. So as Jesus passes away, he's ready to work miracles within your life. But we find in the Bible, oh, many issues or many stories about miracles that Jesus shared or touched the lives of people. The book of Mark and, and Luke and, and Matthew both speak about a man, a man named Bartimaeus. He was a blind man, the scripture says. They would sit, they would sit him outside of the road in Jericho. 
And there was a government he would set out. The government would set out that the coins might be tossed there. He could pick up his coins and go on with his life. So he's sitting there. So I'm sure that as he sat there day after day after day, because the fame of Jesus was running everywhere, he heard both negative and positive things about Jesus Christ. He had heard the story about Jesus. He knew that Jesus uh, would be able to work miracles within the lives. And instead of listening to a negative side saying, no, he's a destroyer, he's against our faith, he began to listen to the one and say, hey, did you hear that? He healed so and so, he did this, he did that, the other. And began to build a faith within his heart saying, if Jesus would just pass my way someday, if he just comes my way, I'm going to get his undivided attention. I'm going to receive the healing that I need because no one could read his mind, but his heart was building up the faith that the moment that Jesus would come his way, he was going to receive his miracle. People, we need to prepare for our lives for a very miracle for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that miracles do not come without a price. There's obstacles you have to beat. There's situations you have to go through in order for God to release his power and that you might show him you really believe in and you're really going to trust him. It's in those moments that we can go past the obstacles of life. We can receive the fullness of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So who, who were the issues here? Who were the problems of in the life of Bartimaeus, the great multitude that's around the Lord Jesus Christ was one of the issues he was facing. So one day he's sitting there, because I've been told that when one of your senses is gone, when you, when you become blind, or when one of the senses is gone, you become very sensitive in others. So by the feel, by the hearing of the noise of people, he could understand something was happening. Something good was happening. Maybe he thought at the beginning, hey, there's a lot of people. I'm going to make a lot of money today. Maybe if I really uh, expect uh, something good from people, they're going to reach out and help me out. Then I might meet the needs for this week. I have no idea initially what he thought. But then as the crowd got closer and closer, and he could hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, then he asked the following, he says, what has happened? He reached out, calling out to people, hey, getting people's attention. He felt someone close, hey, could I speak to you? Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Come on, please listen to me. What is this happening? And the Bible says that they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 37, so they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing his way. Wow, when that happened, that faith of him just blew up. It's my day. This is my day. It's not going to get away. And he heard the crowd moving on. He begins to go, oh, son of David. Have mercy upon me. So here comes the first obstacle. People reach away. Hey, be quiet. Don't bother the man. He's got more important thing to do. Come on, just be quiet. I can imagine me, maybe somebody getting the point. Okay, you got it, got it. Leave it alone. He said, no, 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 no. Inside of his faith, within his faith, he said, it is my moment. Jesus is passing my way. Do not allow anybody to stand between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not allow the comments of people, the opinions of the people, to destroy your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Become immersed in His power and His glory and come to understand, be not ashamed to call out to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your healer. He's your miracle worker. He's the one that will turn the impossible into the possibility because you're going to understand that if He could create this world, He can touch your knees this morning. So as He reached out, and people said, be quiet. Oh, no, no, no. He could hear the voice of Jesus getting further away. He began screaming even louder. Oh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And I get, be quiet, be quiet. And he caught the attention of Jesus. And Jesus called him, stopped him, and says, tell him to come. Bring him to me. And he looked over, and they said to Bartimaeus, come on, he's calling for you. And the Bible says he took the garment, and he flung it aside. Now, that garment was the one he would set down in front of him for the coins or maybe even to cover his feet because it was all dust. It would be all dust by the end of the year. By the end of the day, imagine all the people walking by, I'm walking by, all the dust that was, was provoked. But he used this as a means to cover himself. Yet the Bible said, I have no idea who gave him the garment. I have no idea who thought of the garment. I have no idea who invested in the garment, but it was someone that cared. Someone that looked in his behalf. Someone that was ready to meet his physical needs as he went through life. So when that happened in life, the first thing he did, he took the garment and just threw it out of the way in order to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Another obstacle he had to remove. To remove something that had been part of his life. Something that helped him make a living by receiving the poison to that garment. He put him aside in order to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew that maybe the garment could even trip him on his way. He knew there were so many things that could happen and go wrong, but his moment has come because Jesus was passing his way. For a moment, he just stopped. He threw the garment out of the way and he come and began to walk toward the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what your issues are. I have no idea what garments you're holding on to. I have no idea what things you're holding on to, believing they're so essential in your life that you really need them. They are separating you from the miracle that God has for your life. Release the doubt. Take out the doubt within your mind. 
don't say it's not for me. Don't say it couldn't happen to me. You don't say it's the time of the Bible. I'm telling you, this is the Jesus of the day, ready to meet your every need, to minister your needs, and to say, you know, when doctors say it can't be done, God said it shall be done, because you're not speaking to a religion, you're not speaking to a church, you're speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you get his attention, he's going to call you into his presence. He's going to acknowledge your sacrifice. He's going to acknowledge your need, for he sees your every need. He has the power to deliver you this morning, because there's nothing impossible for God. So as this man begins to walk forward, leading his way toward the Lord Jesus Christ, he's blind. I have no idea if somebody took him by the hand to take him to Jesus, but he followed the voice of Jesus, walked the regular and he comes before his presence. I imagine this man just falling in his knees. And Jesus says to him, what would you have me to do? What do you want? What do you want for your life? And see, he didn't get all fancy. He didn't go to this story, whoa, me, you know, because I'm Bartimaeus, a son of Timaeus. Timaeus was a man that uh, well known to people because I had all this royalty behind me because I had all these good things behind me. He didn't go there. It wasn't important. The things of who he was were no longer important. It was important to place himself into the presence of God, to receive for the miracles of God that he needed for his life. So he began to speak not about all the things that were irrelevant. He spoke about his needs that, that I might receive my sight. People, how simple can that get? I mean, it can be more simple than that to be able to say that I might receive my sight. That today as we walk through life, we receive both spiritual and physical opening of our eyes. That God could just extend his hand of love and mercy and allow us to see his glory and his power. For you see, the only Jesus we're going to see is manifested through what he does in behalf of our lives and the people that surround us. God's not dead. He's really alive. Meeting the needs of people, wanting to meet your desires, ready to meet your every need, to work the miracles, the thing you said, it couldn't be done. Jesus is passing your way, whether it's there at your household, whether it's right there in your bedroom. I don't care where you're at today. Jesus is passing your way to this message, getting ready to deliver you from pain, from affliction, work a miracle within your life that you might understand your moment has come. Do not let him pass by. Be not ashamed to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't believe what people are saying. Be quiet. Be still. Don't bother the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to be bothered. He wants you to come. He wants you to speak to him. He wants you to reach out in faith, believing unto who he is. And for those that believe, Believe all things are possible. Don't get complicated. Don't make excuses. Don't uh, sit back and say because of that. No, no, no. Quit pointing fingers and begin to receive from God what God wants for you. Keep it simple. Keep it basic. And keep the and instruct the Lord what you need for your life. For you see, the things that we confess are the things that God is going to minister. He said that I might receive my Can you imagine all this time waiting for that one moment? And he didn't take 30 minutes. It didn't take 20. He didn't even take one minute. He said, that I might see. But behind that, I might see, there was a faith that couldn't be stopped. There was a determination saying, this is my day that the Lord has given me. And I'm going to take hold of it. I'm going to make use of it because, because God's going to deliver me from my affliction. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole." The Bible says, instantly, he received this sight. The Bible says that from day forward, Bartimaeus followed Jesus. The history teaches he was one of the prime believers in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because one day, one moment, Jesus passed his way. He stopped for a moment, had an interview, had an encounter. The baby lasted no more than a couple of minutes, if that long, in the presence of God, and God worked his man. How long are you willing to wait? How, long, how determined are you to stay in God's presence until you get his attention? Until you feel that God is listening to your need. Until you open up to Lord Jesus Christ and say, Heavenly Father, everybody says no. Everything says no. But you say yes. And when you say yes, there's not a demon in hell that can stop it. There's not a power in this world that can stop it. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Embrace that problem. Move forward with the determination that this is your day. Don't allow him to pass you by. Don't be so shy or so laid back. Or feel so unworthy that you're not worthy. The day he gave his life on Calvary, he made you and I worthy. Even though the concept of people say, no, nah, no, nah, no, no. He has a totally different concept. Do not be led by the people. Had Bartimaeus listened to the people, he would have died a blind man. And he uh, sat back and said, no, no, I'm going to insult the people. I'm embarrassed to call out to God. Oh, how shameful. Come on, if all these people around, I come from a well-to-do family and I'm calling out this way. He could care less what people thought. 
and your mind has to go there. You have to care less about what people say. You need to determine for you, for your family, for your household, for the people that surround you, that God is going to pass by your house today. He's going to meet your every need. Even though the government has you confined to sit at home and to receive this message, there was a purpose for God keeping you in the house today is to receive this message, this challenge to your life, that I don't care what you're going through. There's nothing impossible for God. God wants to meet your every need. Allow me to come your way. Allow me to minister your need. For you see, when we started last week in the book of Mark, chapter number 5, we talked about Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue had come to Jesus. When he comes to Jesus, he tells Jesus, you know, I need you to come to my house. My daughter is gravely ill. She's dying. I need you to come. It is in that context we were last week that as he made his way down to Jairus' house, it was on the woman's issue of blood. Took her moment and received her complete healing. So as they're walking along the way, and Jesus finishes the ministry of the woman in the issue of blood, then a leader, someone from the ruler's house, comes and says, it's too late, your daughter is dead. She's gone. No, there's no more hope. And God said, Jesus said, she's not dead, she's only asleep. He says, but I want you to believe. Obstacle number one. Receives message from home. Humanly speaking, you've been told there is no hope. Your daughter is dead. What is your emotion that goes through your life when you hear that being said? There's no hope. They're gone. It's over. I imagine Jerry has had that same feeling initially. He's human. We're not speaking with superhumans in the life. We're talking about somebody that was human. I imagine that so much went through his life, like maybe thinking, like, had we not taken the time with this woman of Israel blood, we would have had time to get in the house. They said, not we must move. We have to go. So as Jesus began to walk toward Jerry's house, he stopped for a moment. He said, because you know, the issue here is the problem we have here again is people. See, I see, I come back in to understand that behind many miracles, it's the people that are a hindrance. It's the people that allow good things to happen in their life. It's the people and their doubt that destroys your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the people that are stealing from you what God wants to do for your life. So as he sat there and began to walk, they're walking through. And then Jesus stopped for a moment and told the you need to stay. Don't follow him. I don't want anybody to follow him. For you see, God's not a ministry of, of, of for something satisfactory. He doesn't need spectators. He needs believers. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that in that bunch, there was a lot of non-believers. Well, like there was believers in that bunch, but there was a lot of non-believers. They just wanted to see what was going to happen. Isn't that the truth today? People just mm -hmm. want to see. They don't want to get involved. They just want to see. Is this really true? Is this really happening? Did God really do this? Or the they really don't believe. They just want to see. And for the people that want to be lookers, they need to step out for a moment and release that mindset and come to faith and say, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ is to walk by faith. Walk blindly, believing what God can do for your life. For those who walk by faith shall be blessed. Their faith is going to be honored, and they move on forward. He said, no, 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 nobody else follows. And they're on their way. The word comes, she's dead. There's no hope. Let's move on. And so Jesus and Jairus and John and Jacob and Matthew walked walk on to the house. They were the only ones left allowed to go to be part of what God was going to do. Jesus is coming. And then the Bible says in the book of Mark 5, 38, and he came to the house of the ruler of synagogue. I mean, he got there. He got there. Obstacle number two, a bunch of non-believers inside the house. They're already having funeral services. They're crying and weeping and, I mean, just going all out because this 12-year-old girl is now dead. It's over with. Maybe the mindset of some would have been, why, why now, Jesus? Why come now? It's over. We, didn't need, we don't need you now. This thing is done. It's finished. It's hopeless. Dead? Who can be dead? <laughs> they had no idea who was in their presence. The giver of life was in their presence. The great I am. The great Jesus Christ. That he himself would conquer death on Calvary. On down the road. Had walked into the house. He had received and come into the place. He was passing by Jerry's house. And he stopped and went directly inside. And the first thing he did. Once he saw the attitude of his people. He said get out. Again what? Spectators. See we don't need to sit here and cry over our situation. We need to pray. There's a difference, people. There's a lot of people going through in their lives, and instead of praying, they're crying. They're not praying, they're just crying, feeling sorry for themselves. Whoa, me, whoa, this, whoa, that, whoa, the other. What else is next? I can't handle this. Come on, quit crying. 
For the believers, I challenge you, quit crying and begin to pray. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon his name and he's going to answer. Believe that he's still the answer for your life. Watch him work a miracle within your household. But you need to quit crying. You need to establish your faith. You need to put your feet solid on the rock with Jesus Christ and believe that today is your day. Don't say, well, whenever God wants. I've shared this before. There's nothing I hate more people say, well, whenever Jesus wants. No, no. Jesus wants now. He wanted 2,000 years ago. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. He's waiting for you and I to take a step of faith, to believe. And instead of being bound by nature, instead of being bound by the things that are so imminent in front of us, come on, what could be clearer? The little girl is dead. Emotions are running high. People are upset. People are crying. He said, no, no, I don't need this. What do I need? I need believers. I need people that believe in what I can do. So he got rid of all of them. Then he walked into the room where the little girl was laying. She was laying there in her bed. And he walks in, and the disciples are going with him, the one he took with him, and the dad and mom walked in. He stands there, reaches out his hand, takes the little girl's hand, and says, Child, arise and be healed. And it's the little guy. The miracle of God. I can imagine. I can imagine the screaming and the hollering that dad and the mom. Oh my God, Jesus has passed away. Jesus has had mercy. Jesus has taken the time. He stopped everything else. Nothing was more important to him than my need. Jarius and the mom were just, I mean, elated that Jesus had taken the time. Such a great man. The Son of God had come into the house. And the Son of God wants to come into your house this morning. He wants to meet your every need. He wants you to rejoice as a family and come to understand He is still the God of miracles. He's still the God that's going to meet the needs of your household. You need to understand at this trying time, He's still passing by. We said when we initiated this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And today, we're not talking about forever. We're not talking about tomorrow. We're talking about today. Today is the day that God wants to meet your every need if you had the faith. For those that have the faith, for they're going to trust and believe. For the ones that are ready to break the laws of nature and reach out in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is ready to come, to come in and minister to your need. Is there something so impossible that God cannot meet? Is there something happening in your life that you feel that, what's the use? They say that I'm doomed, that it's done. There is no hope. I tell you, there is a hope. His name is still Jesus Christ. He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. He hasn't walked away from you. You walked away from him. Somewhere along the line, you lost sight of who he was. Somewhere along the line, you allowed the enemy to step in and to take away the victory God had for your life. But it's time to stand up as a mighty nation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the children of the Almighty God, and embrace the faith that we have in him. And when man says it's impossible, God just speak the word, it's going to be done. We're facing our worldwide nature, something horrendous. But we also have the one that created the whole world. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. We as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ must not fear the plague that is among us. We must embrace the promise of the blood shed for us on Calvary. And come to believe that in spite of the situation surrounds you, God is still in control of all things. We've all been attacked in different ways. We've all been hurt in different ways. We hear of friends and families who have had loved ones pass on because of this pestilence is going on. We've heard a situation like that, but it never hurts more than when it happens to your house. And when it gets to your house, boy, it can really hurt. But God was good. God has been good to my family. God has spared us. We're still working on my son, still working to be totally delivered. And I believe in this morning that God will deliver him completely from this situation. Most of it is over and done with. But we need the healing touch of Jesus to come over and just finish the work that he begun. And today, as a father, I speak. I speak to the ones that surround me, who are members of my church, who share the same kind of faith, that we join and pray, not only for my son, but for so many other people that have a need this morning. That we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, just pass their way. Whether my family member is out of town, they could be on the side of the world, but you're everywhere, Jesus. Wherever they might be, would you pass that way? I, as a dad, pray for my son. Right there where you're at. May go God's death. And the things that you've been taught and we believed in. And the things we're trusting in. And he's brought us this far already. We're almost out of this thing. We're going to be out now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. 
And I challenge all of you. I've taken this time because as a pastor, I care for all of you. But I'm also a father. I'm also a dad. They've blessed me with my kids that have blessed my life. They've allowed me to come to where I'm at in my ministry. To allow me to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I never looked upon me and said, Dad, you didn't have time for us. We're always too busy with the church. But we're always there to support our ministry. It goes on to the next generation. The grandkids of our church that are in ministry and worship and praise and teaching. And God has blessed me in such a special way. But I just ask one more time, Jesus. Pass on me. Pass on me. And bring deliverance. Bring a complete healing to the body of my son. And I pray for your family. I pray for the ones that you love. For the ones that need a complete touch of Jesus. The same Jesus I'm calling for for my son, I call for your family member. Because Jesus loves us all. Don't make excuses. Don't feel what's the use. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Embrace it. Hold on to it. Call upon the Lord. Maybe you're there by yourself. It's all right. Scream at him if you want. Get his attention. But make sure that you don't let him pass you by. Tell him as he passes this morning. Through this message, he is passing through your life and through your household. And he's challenging you to take a step of faith. And I challenge you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. Receive your miracle. Because it's not about me. It's about him and the one that I represent. And there's power in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I come before your presence. Where else can I go? I can only give your word. I can share those things you've placed upon my heart to share with those that are in tremendous needs. And I know that what I have to share is powerful. I know that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. And I call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that above all names. And I pray for all those who are going through difficult times in their lives, where they might be. They might be in their bedroom, in their living room. They may be watching the big screen at the house. It doesn't matter. I send the healing power of Jesus Christ, the miracle workers of Jesus Christ. I pray for the ones that are here with me in the church right now, that if they have a need within their lives, that you would extend your hand of love and mercy right now, and the glory that's in this house, and the power that's in this house might deliver from all affliction, from all pain. They might be delivered and restored and receive the fullness of Jesus Christ. It's because you live, Heavenly Father, that we make this claim. Heavenly Father, I place everyone there's reaching out to you. For there are no strangers. You died for all of us. And in spite of what the concept of the world is, you have a different concept of us. You said that you had come to seek those that were lost, and that was us. And in your mercy, you reached out your hand of love and mercy. And once again, Heavenly Father, we ask, you reach out your hand and minister to the needs of those that are calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the precious name of Jesus, the name that above all names, we call it done. We expect great testimonies of what this message is brought to the lives of people because of who you are. I ask these in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity of sharing my heart with you. And I pray something said this morning just to encourage you to do the right things. To reach the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive Him. Let us know. Drop us a little line. Let us know that this was a blessing to your life. It is our greatest desire to have a very blessed week. In spite of circumstances that surround you, that you might be blessed in the midst of all and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of my wife and myself, I want to say hello to all of you. Thank you for all you've done in our behalf. We also remind, you're also reminded about how you can contribute to this ministry. I think it's already attached there in the statements that were being made. How you can reach out to us and meet our financial needs here at the church. We ask you to be faithful to God. Thank you for all the ones that have been faithful. The ones that have called or come by the house or uh, dropped their ties through the mail. Thank God for all that have been obedient to the call of God that allows us to stand here today and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love all of you. God be with you. I hope you have a, I mean, I'm just praying you have a great week. That this message will just encourage you and say, man, this week is a week of victory because today Jesus has passed my way. So what happened? Because he passed my way, he met my reading. God bless you. God be with you. And we'll see you on Wednesday night with our Bible study.